hit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first show of the FC Sports Podcast. It's called the FC Sports Podcast for a reason. We're going to be talking about FC sports and just pretty much sports in general. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great interviews, analytics, stats in general, and a great show for you on the way. This is going to be Fridays um, after school here at Franklin Central. I am your host, Drew Grimes. Alongside me is Kyle Pearsall. Let's get underway. So to start off, we're going to be talking about um, the FC girls basketball. And uh, you play Brownsburg tonight, right? December 2nd. And it's going to be a really tough game, but I think it is definitely winnable. Yeah, you know, we had a hard-fought game against Columbus North. Uh, I mean, a tough, tough second half, but I feel like we can bounce back here and beat a, beat a good Brownsburg team. Yeah, I see uh, in the second quarter we only have one point, which means our defense, especially in that first half, was absolutely outstanding. However, we didn't end up giving up uh, 19 in that fourth quarter where we only scored five. That's uh, heartbreaking for a team as we lost by four. I mean, you know, any of those points could have fluctuated either way. We just couldn't get them to go our way. Yeah, and I feel like uh, for this game against Brownsburg, you know, Madison Monday, she's been playing really good. And I feel like if she keeps that going, we'll have a we'll have a really good chance to beat this Brownsburg team. That's five and five. Yeah, I see uh, Steinhofer and Wilson are also doing really good, especially in the defensive end. Uh, Steinhofer, our leading rebounder for this year so far. Uh, if we can just capitalize on these rebounds, offensive and defensive, build some more pressure down the court, I think we're going to be in a really good spot. Yep. And uh, now we're going to go into boys basketball for FC. So uh, we played tonight against Brownsburg, uh, who is 2-0, and our team is 0-2. So for this game coming up, it's going to be actually a really hard matchup, but it's nothing that we cannot, you know, accomplish and handle. I think it's also going to be really good to see our guys, you know, play with team chemistry this game and see what we can do against this really good Brownsburg team. So uh, our next topic is going to be IU basketball. IU basketball coming off a big win at home on Wednesday night. Uh, they beat uh, number 18th ranked, previously number one ranked, North Carolina. Uh, how do you think the game went for us? I think the first half was outstanding. I mean, IU just came out, just put the hammer down. You know, I was really excited to see Trey Galloway play. He did. He he had his best game for IU, I think, in my, in my opinion. And, I mean, it's a big game. So, if we can have him step up in those big games... I think we'll be a okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Galloway came across with 23 minutes and 11 points. I, he was the main star of the show for me. He had the dunk on the fast break. And one thing I've also noticed about him, he has had lockdown defense all year so far. Yeah, I mean, he was guarding uh, Love and locking him up. I don't think, I do not remember when Love scored against Trey Galloway. I do not either. Love has been their top, or UNC's top scorer. All year round, I looked at the stat sheet. He was easily one of their top guys, along with Armando Baycott. And, I mean, Galloway just locked him down. Also, uh, Hood Scafino, for uh, our freshman guard, played absolutely outstanding. 36 minutes, 14 points. Scored, like, our first eight of the game. Uh, how do you think he did? Well, I mean, that first half was electric. I mean, he he was on fire, and he knew it. I mean, he was, he was putting up shots and making them. So, I mean, like I always say, if he... If he does good and Renew does good, we'll be good. I mean, Renew, I I feel like the stat sheet didn't, like, really, it doesn't really, like, you know, uh, compare with how he played. He only had two points, but I feel like he played uh, played a lot better than just two points. Yeah, he play, he had two points, played those 11 minutes, but the 11 minutes looked good on the floor. You know, they they gave hustle, they gave heart, they gave, you know, good effort. Another thing to go along with his Cofino, he went six from ten from the floor and two for three from downtown. I also want to give some love to Trace Jackson Davis, uh, our uh, All-American, you know, our top scorer. Had 21 points and 10 rebounds, got the double-double. Uh, he actually had a really great game, was really dominating Baycott down low, wasn't giving him anything to work with, and, you know, I think he just dominated the game all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another person I thought did really good was Xavier Johnson, you know, 0 for 3 from, uh, from downtown, but went 50% from the field and was a... Uh, was a good help for in uh, Indiana on offense and on the de defensive half. He had eight rebounds and four assists, so I think, I think if he can keep that up. Yeah, when Xavier Johnson plays good, I mean, the Hoosiers tend to play good. So, I mean, fifth-year senior from Pittsburgh, 
you know, he's actually shown some really good growth this year, and he's played really well this year. Mm-hmm. On our next uh, section, we're going to go into uh, the World Cup, specifically U.S. men's national team soccer. So we just got word that Pulisic is cleared to play. He was probably our best player, if not easily our best player. Uh, from the midfield. I don't really know much about soccer, but we're going to get into this. And uh, he's good to play. We play the Netherlands on Saturday. And if we win that, we go on and play Argentina. How do you think about these next two games coming up? Oh, I mean, both of them are going to be uh, I mean, really tough games. I mean, if we play like we played against England, I think we'll be fine because we played extremely well against England, especially on the defensive half. half. I feel like uh, our goalie has really stepped up, and I feel like if we just keep this going, I mean, like, like I said, we're going to have really tough games. So, yeah, I, mean. I, uh, I also want to go off of that. England's a really tough team, but I think Netherlands has proved that they're one of the best teams so far in this World Cup. I mean, plus after that, we got to face Me- Messi and Argentina if we win. Or, or Australia, if Australia somehow beats Ar- Argentina. Yeah, but I don't think that's going <laughs> to really happen. But, hey, you never know. But uh, we have to focus on the first game, which is the Netherlands. Netherlands have proved to me that they're one of the best teams so far. Yes. Um, it's going to be a really hard game. So uh, now we're going to go on to our next section, which is going to be just fantasy football. We're going to go who to sit, who to start, and who to pick up off the free agent market. So, Kyle, who are you sitting, starting, and picking up? Okay, so my must-start for this week, uh, there's obviously, uh, you know, like a lot of, you know, obvious options. But if anybody's, like, iffy on this guy, I feel like this is a must-start. Jonathan Taylor, they're playing. um, The reason people might not start him is because they are playing uh, the Cowboys team, which has a great defense. But I feel like he's going to get the ball a bunch Sunday night because, I mean, last game was really tough for Matt Ryan. And... Um, I think the Colts will go with the running attack. Yeah, and to build off of that, uh, you know, the Cowboys have great defense. They have great secondary. I don't know how Ryan's going to do with our receivers and the Dallas secondary. I don't know if he's going to be able to complete and do much with the offensive side. And I think we're just going to have to give it off to Taylor and see what he can do. He went 6 from 10 from the floor and 2 for 3 from downtown. I also want to give some love to Trace Jackson Davis, uh, our uh, All-American, you know, our top scorer, had 21 points and 10 rebounds, got the double-double. Uh, he actually had a really great game, was really dominating Baycott down low, wasn't giving him anything to work with, and, you know, I think he just dominated the game all around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and another person I thought did really good was Xavier Johnson, you know, 0 for 3 from uh, from downtown, but went 50% from the field and was a, was a good help. For in uh, Indiana on offense and on the de- defensive half, uh, he had eight rebounds and four assists. So I think, I think if he can keep that up, I'm yeah. Good. When Xavier Johnson plays good, I mean the Hoosiers tend to play good. So I mean, fifth year senior from Pittsburgh, you know he's actually shown some really good growth this year, and he's played really well this year. Mm-hmm. On our next uh, section, we're gonna go into uh, the World Cup specifically. U.S. men's national team soccer. So we just got word that Pulisic is cleared to play. He was probably our best player, if not easily our best player uh, from the midfield. I don't really know much about soccer, but we're going to get into this. And uh, he's good to play. We play the Netherlands on Saturday. And if we win that, we go on and play Argentina. How do you think about these next two games coming up? Oh, I mean, both of them are going to be... I mean, really tough games. I mean, if we play like we played against England, I think we'll be fine because we played extremely well against England, especially on the defensive half. half. I feel like uh, our goalie has really stepped up, and I feel like if we just keep this going, I mean, like, like I said, we're going to have really tough games. So, yeah, I, mean, I, uh, I also want to go off of that. England's a really tough team, but I think Netherlands has proved that they're one of the best teams so far in this World Cup. I mean... Plus, after that, we got to face Me- Messi and Argentina if we win. Or, or Australia if Australia is, if somehow beats Ar- Argentina. Yeah, but I don't think that's going <laughs> to really happen. But, hey, you never know. But uh, we have to focus on the first game, which is the Netherlands. Netherlands have proved to me that they're one of the best teams so far. Yes. Um, it's going to be a really hard game. 
So uh, now we're going to go on to our next section, which is going to be just fantasy football. We're going to go who to sit, who to start, and who to pick up off the free agent market. So, Kyle, who are you sitting, starting, and picking up? Okay, so my must start for this week. Uh, there's obviously, uh, you know, like a lot of, you know, obvious options. But if anybody's, like, iffy on this guy, I feel like this is a must start. Jonathan Taylor. They're playing... Um, the reason people might not start him is because they are playing uh, the Cowboys team, which has a great defense. But I feel like he's going to get the ball a bunch Sunday night because, I mean, ugh, last game was really tough for Matt Ryan. And um, I think the Colts will go with the running attack. Yeah, and to build off of that, uh, you know, the Cowboys have a great defense. They have great secondary. I don't know how Ryan's going to do with our receivers and the Dallas secondary. I don't know if he's going to be able to complete and do much with the offensive side. And I think we're just going to have to give it off to Taylor and see what he can do. And our next game of the week is um, Kansas State and TCU. TCU projected a win here, the number three seed, facing off Kansas State. What's your projection here, Kyle? Um, this is a tough one because I feel like the Big 12 games, anything can happen. I mean, there's been some crazy ones this year. But TCU, I feel like they need this to get into the college playoffs, and they know that too. And I feel like that's going to push them to victory. That's the thing. I've seen TCU play good. I've also seen TCU play kind of mediocre this year. I think Kansas State's going to take control and advantage of that. I have Kansas State in this game. Mom. Our next game is LSU and Georgia in the SEC Championship. What do you got, Kyle? Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't think I really need an explanation here. I mean, yes, LSU beat Alabama. Yes, LSU is a good team. Yes, they're ranked in the top 25. I just think Georgia's, Georgia's just a way better football team. And for me, uh, Georgia. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Uh, there's really no explanation we needed. They've clearly proved themselves so far the best team. Uh, we ha we'll just have to see what happens in the college football playoff. And um, next game is going to be Purdue in Michigan in the Big Ten Championship. I'll start this one off. I got Michigan. Uh, there's nothing much to be said. Michigan just beat Ohio State. Um, they have one of the top defenses. They've proved they have a really good offense. However, I did see that their running back is now out for this season, which could affect them down the road, but I think they will take this one against Purdue. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's a great analysis there because, I mean, Purdue, they've been, they, I'm, they, don't get me wrong, they're a good team. They, you know, won, won the Big Ten West, but I do think that Michigan will win this game. Yeah, I just don't think they can compete with the firepower that Michigan has. Our last game this week for Picks of the Week is going to be the ACC Championship, Clemson, North Carolina. Who do you have, Kyle? This one's a tough one for me, just because I feel like Clemson's been like such a, such a like a out of control team, like not really out of control, but like just so like all over the place. They they lost to Notre Dame, but they beat some really good teams too. <sighs> I feel like North Carolina though hasn't had that you know that tough as much tough as a schedule as Clemson. So I'm going to go Clemson on this one. You know, I can follow that up, but I could also, you know, go away from that. Uh, Clemson, I feel, has played really good. I've also feel they've played really bad. North Carolina, on the other hand, has played really good, kind of mediocre all season. It's going to be a tough matchup between both teams. I think it's going to be a close game, but I do think Clemson will come out with a win. North Carolina has just been, a, you know, middle of the top 25 pack team. They haven't really shown themselves really. I think, you know, Clemson just clearly proves that they are the better team. And that is going to wrap up our show this week. Uh, thank you for watching and listening to the FC Sports Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Drew Grimes. Alongside me is Kyle Pearsall. This show will air Fridays after school hours around 1. And uh, it will be on our YouTube channel around 2.15 or 2-ish. So thank you for listening and thank you for watching. And see you guys next week. Bye.